Good evening, afternoon, night, morning, wherever you find a way to watch or listen to this podcast. It is me, Omar, with Hardware. We are four weeks to the season starts uh, as of today uh, on an early El Paso morning out here for me. And I'm joined by a guest. I'm joined by uh, Justin Brissett, a uh, big UConn fan. He, coll- he collaborates a lot with uh, Bobby with uh, with Bobby Wilson of the TNT College Football Podcast, who I have partnered with many times. And he's in the... I mean, I can't give an exact percentage, but he's at least more than halfway done with his daily season previews, which are just so, they're just so, like, detailed. Like, I, he's, like, one of the hardest working men, like, in, in this college sports or college, uh, college football writing industry. Like, it, it's it's amazing, like, what he's doing. But I'm joined by uh, Justin Brissett, big UConn fan, a Connecticut native, to talk about our topic today, which is a really interesting one in the scope of everything that's happening, but something that I would rather cover because everyone cares about conferences, but I'd rather cover this. Yeah, so uh, you know, W WFSB uh partnered up. Also, their sister network WWAX uh, partnered up with uh, UConn, which was very exciting. There's a lot of drama going around right now, so it was, it was kind of nice to just see this partnership kind of you know make the fan base kind of more you know excited about everything. Uh, both sides to uh, UConn Twitter for basketball and UConn Twitter for football, even women's basketball, uh, hockey. Um, they're all excited about this opportunity. Um, this is a local station for us. Uh, it's huge because when we went to the AAC, uh, a lot of bad things happened to UConn. Uh, sports were all like kind of going down. Um, it just wasn't a, a, a fit for us. Um, the, the, the whole thing just didn't work out. So what we did when we moved back to the Big East and then had football for independent, uh, A lot of the local stations, um, ESPN, too, uh, started to really um, have, it's not respect, but talked about about UConn again. You know, it wasn't kind of a sour subject. Uh, Now, UConn uh, football, all the sports are back to where they should be. Uh, Jim Mora did a really good job last year uh, turning a 6-6 and season. It was really 6-7 and after the loss to Marshall at the Myrtle beach bowl, which I was at, uh, it was, it was, it was phenomenal. I mean, the, uh, the fan base, uh, that was there, it, they, they were all excited. I mean, we had people jumping up and down, uh, the, the whole UConn sideline was great. So, uh, this year I'm hoping for the same success, uh, even better, uh, uh eight and four I- I'm predicting for UConn football, um, seven to five at the, at the minimum. Um, and, with this WFSB partnership, um, it's for the 2023 and 2024 season. They are going to uh, have women's basketball, men's basketball, ice hockey, baseball, softball, and also coaching shows. Um, it, the, the UConn season preview show, uh, 826, is the football. Uh, Jim Moore is going to be on it. And he'll provide inside looks on the athletes, the schedules, all around program. So we're very excited uh, to, to have that. Also, they're going to have the UConn and Sacred Heart football game November 8th, on, 18th on the uh, WFSB, too, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, so my bad for not prefacing our discussion, but I mean, Justin like hit it right on the head about what we're talking about. So uh, yesterday, quietly on the national landscape, UConn announced that their game against Sacred Heart on November 18th, uh, aka SEC Cupcake Week, um, is, is scheduled for uh, for WFSB, like Justin said, uh, a local channel, the CBS affiliate, I believe, for Heart for the Heart for New Haven market. Um, after doing some brief Wikipedia research, uh, that game will be on local television in that market uh, on the CBS affiliate, and um, you know it, it's really a game that doesn't really have much national relevance. With uh, of course two two schools in Connecticut, especially Sacred Heart, a school in the Northeast Conference. Pretty much, I think the Northeast Conference is, along with the Pioneer Football League, one of the most overshadowed and undercovered uh, leagues in the FCS. So it makes sense that they did this. Um, I, I'm a fan because I just love, I love any time you get two schools that aren't a brand name playing on over the air local television, um, a channel that doesn't require like cable and whatnot, you know, which is why like, it's just great. I mean, I know I made a big deal about like VMI and uh, NC state on the CW this year. It's just because you don't see VMI on network TV, 
as much. So same thing with Sacred Heart and UConn. I think it's a great partnership. Uh, I kind of want to know, Justin, I know, I guess I relate to you because as an Army fan, all, all of Army ga- all, all of Army's games are on CBS Sports Network. So me, I generally lo- love the group of five. So typically uh, ESPN Plus would be enough for me. But as an Army fan, I have to pony up that extra. I mean, what's YouTube TV nowadays? Like 75 bucks a month just so yeah. I could watch my Army Black Knights. So I guess how excited, uh, I guess, is the, the UConn fan base? I mean, um, especially you as a local guy. Uh, who is in within the market of WFSB? We're very excited because locally uh, we can we can be advertised. It's like an advertisement for for you know even Sacred Heart um, recruiting wise. Um, recruit, yeah, definitely recruits in the state. Uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of prep programs too for football uh, in the state that have you know high caliber uh, recruits, which is really going to help uh, UConn. Um, this is a local station. I'm hoping uh, UConn has a UConn Plus app, too, um, that you can actually see sports on. So I'm hoping that a lot of the alumni and a lot of the fan base can watch this game via UConn Plus. I'm really hoping that they uh, they come out with that. If they don't, uh, this is this is just a really good advertisement for sports um, to to really to really make make everybody excited because sometimes everybody you know they they don't really have like espn cbs sports network included in their cable package or even their uh streaming package so for them to have a local game on uh it's 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 really great Uh, a lot of people in connecticut too you know they're very excited about their yukon sports again uh everybody you know everybody said the anchor of the sports programs was uh football you know dragging behind but uh when they're they're definitely coming up up and coming uh they're picking up really good recruits uh their 2023 uh recruiting class has been really great 2024 is shaping up to even be better so uh this all around um for for all UConn fans for everybody in the state it's it's very exciting because for WFSB to actually recognize this it's it's huge yeah, I mean, I, I definitely agree. Like, I'm coming more from the FCS perspective because those are the schools I typically cover. Uh, and I wrote an article on earlier or earlier last week at the time I'll I'll, I'll publish this this uh this podcast about how big this was for Sacred Heart uh, and, and Central Connecticut State uh, last year when they had their opening game, when UConn had their opening game, excuse me, on CW20, just getting this, this airtime on local channels. And uh, just getting, um, honestly, the audience of the state and like, of I guess, yeah, the, the Hartford, uh, New Haven market, which reaches a million homes, even a tenth of those people, or even a tenth of those households watching this game, which is, I think, I, I think an underestimate, but, you know, a reasonable estimate is still 100,000 viewers for schools like Sacred Heart in Central Connecticut, which don't get much attention in the region, which are overshadowed by the Yukons, the uh, the Ivy Leagues, of course, and even the CAA. So it's definitely huge for the schools in those regions and huge, and huge for rec- recruiting, too. Uh, I mean, when people think Yukon, I'm sure when they think about Yukon football, they, they still think former Big East member. They still they think 2010 uh fiesta bowl or i guess if it was in january of 2011 2011 fiesta bowl they still think those things so uh i i mean it's huge for those schools and just like see i guess recruiting for those schools like i mean you have the chance to play uconn just looking at uconn's future schedules which uh i'm looking ahead at this partnership last which i certainly believe it will there is no fcs game scheduled so far for 2024 but 2025 central connecticut state is back on the schedule 2026 you get lafayette on the schedule too uh, a bit of a name brand uh, with a lot of tradition in the uh, in the fcs circuit but still i mean really good games locally for um, the local fan base and just really good as well i mean especially for central connecticut to get another appearance on um wfsb if the partnership lasts yeah, no, uh, definitely for for those schools, uh, for Sacred Heart and CCSU, they always come into UConn and they always want to beat UConn. Uh, that's their goal, and they always play UConn tough, no matter what the spread is. Um, you know, I'm I'm really hoping for the Sacred Heart game. We're we're definitely three uh, three touchdowns, uh, you know, and 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 three field goals above them. It'd be great. Uh, but they're gonna they're gonna come in and play hard because for Sacred Heart and CCSU to have this opportunity to be on local TV, 
I mean, it's 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 great for them because yeah, it's usually you know Yale, it's usually you know uh, Connecticut, usually you know they're 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 all they're all kind of like you know the uh, always kind of put off, right? So uh, so for them, it's great. I mean, even even this partnership can even go on too with the CCSU could even be uh, average. Um, um, uh, the game could even be on uh, w, WF, WFSB. So uh, if I can actually talk, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so these, those, those schools, you know, they're not, they're not, you know, crappy schools. They're really good schools. And uh, you know, like, like Sacred Heart, they just picked up a guy from Texas, uh, Brian Hollins, which Brian Hollins, he actually had some good offers. Um, I think, I think what happened was an injury came around and then uh, he ended up going to Sacred Heart. But it's nice because these kids, you know, th this these talents going into CCSU and Sacred Heart. I mean, it, it's it's great for them. And it, it, it really helps recruiting to Connecticut, too, because you want it's just not UConn, it's just not Yale. You want your FCS programs to recruit very well, too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. And I mean, I, I, I think. Um, that the WFSB partnerships makes these games against the in-state opponents, uh, whether it be um, Sacred Heart, Central Connecticut State. I mean, in the future too, uh, bordering schools, whether it be Bryant, your Merrimax, uh, and those other NEC slash Big South schools. I think it makes those series more viable because you're getting a uh, local TV headsets or I'm sorry, local TV sets to watch. Uh, it sounded like a very old expression, but you're getting a viewers you're getting um in you're getting travel fan bases will travel and i know this is sacred hearts first ever game against an fbs opponent and i mean they're just in fairfield uh they may be a small school but i can bet that a lot of there's a lot of alumni in the local area and a lot of alumni looking forward to actually playing one an fbs opponent and one that's nearby so i really think this partnership really maximizes the viability of the of these uh, in-state games and, and i think if you're going to do an fcs opponent i mean an in-state or a regional opponent is the best way to do it i mean speaking from the perspective of army army scheduling usually patriot league schools uh uh yearly i mean mostly because of their partnership with the patriot league in olympic sports but it's just great too that these are local programs that are nearby that can travel well and that have a lot of tradition because i mean if there's one thing that that army that army loves as a program is its tradition so i i, I do i do like this partnership i like this uh the, these series with uh, these local nec schools and i honestly like i i can't wait to see what the future has in store for it yeah no and also for for basketball and all other sports uh fairfield university would be another one that could definitely be uh you know, grouped up with uh, some, you know, we, we, we should we should actually schedule more games with them, too, so they could be on WFSB because they're a really good Division I uh, basketball school and, you know, all, all, all around. Uh, they don't have football. Um, would be nice if they did have football. But, uh, yeah, that's another school that's, you know, overshadowed by, by, by the big schools in Connecticut also. Uh, they're actually in Fairfield also. So Sacred Heart in them, and, you know, it's, it, it's nice because – Whatever in basketball, whatever uh, Fairfield University doesn't want, Sacred Heart probably picks up. So I mean, for for them, it, it's it's kind of nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm very uh, I'm very excited. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that uh, you know UMass game too. Uh, I think WFSB should really be there. I know it's going to probably be on a bigger uh, 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 network but it would also be nice for wfsb to pick that up and also you know when, when we do schedule army i think we need to schedule army even more and uh that would be really cool to have you know uh it, it's 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 just the opening to to this abyss that you know it's with everything going around you really want these local channels to support your uh your college sports because it actually helps too because especially in you know conference realignments too uh you know and uh it it, it just helps all around so uh yeah it, it it's it's just crazy i mean things things are changing in connecticut you know even i i, I heard the other day too on twitter this you know bc fan and umass you know um, um umass fan uh you know he kind of went for both for for both schools he actually wants to start seeing more yukon now and it's like wow that's crazy so I mean, UConn, even out west, down south, 
uh, even when I went to the Myrtle Beach Bowl, like everybody knows UConn brand now. And everybody's like, wow, they actually have football. Except for some people, they think that we don't have football still. And we do. We're at we, we're on huge networks. I don't know how people don't know this. And they're like, oh, no, they, they have horrible football. No, it's on up and coming. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of exciting things happening in Connecticut. Uh, this is not the last time you're going to hear some exciting things uh, in, in the future, too. I mean, it's it's just crazy. It, it, it's just nuts. It's, it's a really good time to be a UConn fan. I, I feel like we're, we're back in the, you know, old Big East times where, you know, football was at its all time high. Basketball, all the sports were at all time high. So it, it's, it's just really great. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And you mentioned UMass, and I think um, something I want to ask before uh, before we we head off is there's rumors, and it still hasn't been finalized, and it's about to be August, um, which I'm surprised, but it hasn't been finalized as site of the UMass UConn game. I've been hearing Gillette Stadium. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? Because I know that uh, that UMass, the atmosphere at Gillette Stadium for UMass games has been pretty dead throughout their time in in the FBS. I mean. Um, it was a partnership out of necessity when they first moved up and had to renovate uh, McGwork, uh, McGwork uh, Alumni Stadium. And I mean, they haven't been, they have not been back to play at Gillette Stadium in five years. In fact, I was at the, the last uh, UMass Gillette game when they played BYU. And even then, BYU, a national brand, couldn't draw more than 10,000 or so. So, I mean, I, I want to know your thoughts on that. I mean, I love seeing my program, love seeing Army play at neutral side at, at NFL stadiums, even if, you know, the atmosphere is kind of dead. But, I mean, I just want to know your thoughts. Yeah, so it actually kind of – I I think if it was at Gillette, uh, it's really close. It's not too far away from this area, from the northeast Connecticut. Um, it's actually a really good for, for UMass fans for the travel to. Uh, it's – it's it, it it would be pretty cool to uh to have your team play in an NFL stadium like Gillette. I've never been at Gillette. So this this UMass game I'm going to go to no matter what, but I've been here in Gillette, but there's also Fenway and there's also Yankee Stadium. Um that would help these two programs also. Uh the New York market, the Boston market, and even the you know, even Connecticut market. Um you have a lot of you have a lot of markets around here and it's it's kind of like a prime area for for any college sports and um I'm 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 still not sold on Gillette. I I really I really want Fenway. Uh I really like how you know the uh, Fenway they 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 have the football uh um fields all set up. Uh we went back uh Actually, my dad and I went to uh, the Fenway game when uh, Boston College was playing UConn, and it was the most rainy night in the world. In, in in the world, but uh, you know we had a lot of fun. And uh, but Gillette would be kind of cool too. I, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of like you know fifty fifty right now. But if it, if it's Gillette, I'm going to get tickets for it most definitely. Yeah, no, I'm with you, and I know uh, this year Army Navy's at Gillette, so I mean it, it's kind of a hotbed. It's going to be a hotbed for uh, Northeast football this year. Even though it's an Army fan, I would definitely love to see Army Navy at Fenway Park, but everything's about money these days. Army Navy's selling, going to sell out Gillette. They sell out Lincoln Financial and even MetLife Stadium, an even bigger stadium. So I don't think Army Army Navy at Fenway's. Um, I guess um, I don't think it's ever going to happen. But uh, I was really hoping that they would get UConn, ben, UConn, UMass at Fenway. But for whatever reason, I guess that wasn't possible. But, I mean, again, I'll settle for UMass, UConn at Gillette. I mean, like you said, because it's cool to see, uh, see you know, your program play at NFL Stadium, especially now with um, there's only three programs, I believe, that play at NFL Stadiums regularly, and with that being Miami, Temple, and USF. But USF is about to exit that list. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I'm totally all for it. And I mean, looking at the, at the future schedules, it looks like UConn has Temple in 2026 and 2027 and 2028. So should be, uh, I mean, that's definitely a great series for sure. I mean, UConn and Temple. Oh, yeah. I mean, with this independent uh, football schedule, too, I mean, we have a lot of good teams to play and it's it's really it's going to be a lot of fun. I I, I just can't wait.
Yeah, me neither. I mean, and that's the thing too with independence. We like I know a lot of stress about Army playing a unique and national schedule. Um, we play three Power Five teams this year. We have Syracuse for the first time since 1996, and like, um, I think it's like the second time since like 1988. I think even. So I mean, we have Syracuse and we have Boston College back on the schedule for the first time in a decade. So it's really an exciting time to be. And of course, LSU. Everyone, everyone's everyone's thinking about the LSU game, which like me, I'm not excited about it because I don't see what's so special about Tiger Stadium. But and I mean, yeah. independence is cool. But I think uh, I'm just kind of scared because as the future becomes even more playoff centric and independence like UConn and, and the Army are put, are squeezed out of the playoff or at least easy access to the playoff. I mean, I, I kind of wonder what our what our fan bases will think. Yeah, I mean, a lot of like we can't be like a Notre Dame, right? Notre Dame is a independent football, uh, you know, and uh, and and they're the ones that are lucky where they can go to the playoffs, you know, because they just have a huge following. Um, for Army and UConn, though, Army and UConn don't sleep on those on on those two schools. I mean, Army plays a really tough like option football. I mean, it's old school, but it's something that they'll just smack you around. And uh, last year when UConn played them, I was like, wow, Army's really good. I mean, Army's really good. It went back and forth, but then Army just kind of, you know, you know, they, they, they just had it. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think the guys were looking at a bowl. <laughs> I don't think they were looking at that game and they should have. Uh, it actually reminded me of the Ball State game a little bit, you know, where where UConn kind of fizzled out. And like this year, uh, you know, our, our fan base is what we have to do is we have to win games, uh, both Army and UConn. We have to win the, the, the games that nobody thinks we're going to win. And I really do think that you that college football in a whole is all balancing out now. It's balancing out to a point where you're not going to have undefeated teams anymore. You know, especially in especially in the you know national championship, you're gonna have you know two to four four game you know game lot you know losses with with, with these schools, and uh, it's gonna be normal. I mean, pretty soon, like even FCS schools, they're all evening out too. With uh, you know, there a lot of them are beating these uh, FBS programs. So, I mean, it, it the the future's bright. I mean, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of dying out. We're only we're going to have three super conferences and this and that. But the thing is, is that even if they do have three super conferences, these schools like UConn and Army and, you know, even even a Holy Cross or, you know, so in schools like that, even Temple, um, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely going to be, you know, always we're, we're always going to be around. Right. So we're probably so basically like a like a temple army and Yukon, especially. I think we're going to be like people that everybody's going to look after, even when there's, you know, three super conferences, they might be called up. They they probably will be called up because, you know, these schools are up and coming. I mean, they, you know, like like temple, they have a young they have a really young team. They have a young quarterback, um, you know, uh, and Warren and, and Warner. So, uh, I mean, it, it can go any way. I mean, this whole thing, we could talk for hours on this, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm very excited for the future of college sports. Yeah, no, me too. I, I'm, I'm excited too. And I choose to be optimistic rather than, uh, than be, uh, pessimistic about the future for sure. So, I mean, yeah, I, I could, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I mean, I, I for one want army to would like army to join a conference, but I have no problem with the schedule we're playing now. It's national. We play some high-profile games against, I mean, really good group of five teams. Same thing for UConn, too. UConn's got a, a few Power 5 uh, T games. And, I mean, I think all three of the ACC games are not all three. I think two of them are at home with uh, Duke and NC State and the Boston College is on the road. So, you guys play, like, a high-profile schedule, too. And then, of course, Tennessee for you guys, so. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a. I mean, there's still hope for uh being an independent. There's still a light at the end of the tunnel being an independent. But um, that's that's all I had to cover, Justin. Do you have anything else to add? Anything you want to promote? Yeah, for independence too. For these for 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 these other conference for these big boys, they're always gonna want us. You know, schedule independent. It's not gonna go away, um, because UConn has schedules all the way to. 
I forget, like 2026 or 2025. I mean, they're they're branching out. So, I mean, it's definitely for independents. I, I think independent's fine, too. I mean, independent, you know, it, it's something where you get paid from huge, big schools like Tennessee and Ohio State. Uh, so, I mean, you get played to either get beaten really badly or to actually upset them. And then that's really going to upset the uh, – those big colleges too. So it's, it's very exciting and I can't wait for this season and uh, go Huskies. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, and for army too, like you get paid to bring a, a nice fan base of, uh, of old, of old troops and old grads. So that, that, that's that too. But, uh, but yeah, no, I'm excited too, Justin. I'm excited for what UConn has in store. And I know we're not playing you guys this year. I think we play you guys again in 2024, definitely 2025, but I, I'm a huge fan of the Northeast rivalries, whether it be UMass, which we do play every single year, uh, for Army and then UConn. But, I mean, I, I'm just excited for those Northeast rivalries. And, uh, you know, I, I just hope these last for many years to come. Uh, so, I mean, I will say this year's UConn game, I, that was after Army lost to Troy on a last-second field goal, which, like, I mean, in retrospect, would have put us in the Independence Bowl. So I was just heartbroken. I, I couldn't even watch that game. I, I would, like, occasionally I would just, like, flip the channel and see, like, what the score was and then just, like, turn away and just, like, in, in, in despair and sadness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, but, I'm I'm really hoping uh, I can go up to BC game this year because I love seeing them lose. I love it. Yeah, I know. I th- I think I think you're the one that that um uh, I was like I was like, what's your thoughts on this UConn Nation about? Because uh, that that's the homecoming game this year. Um, and you're like, you know, I would I wouldn't mind beating them on you know on their homecoming, like taking their money and beating them. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the 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 one thing for uh for UConn. You know, we we really have a bad taste with BC because they're the ones that did not want us in the ACC. So uh, okay. because they 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 just didn't want to get beaten. I mean, they 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 <laughs> you know they they didn't want to get beaten, and they knew UConn was uh they're they're bigger than BC. So you know, I'm 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 very you know I it gets it's it gets me going. I mean, I I love it. It's almost like a rivalry. I I kind of wish that we could always schedule them along with Army and UMass. I mean, those those three would be awesome. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't have much ill will towards Boston College, but I mean, again, like that's 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 a power five team right there for for Army. So uh, I hope to make one leg of that series in the future for sure. Um, but yeah, like that's all I have to say, Justin. Do you have anything final to add? No, I don't. I I spit it all out. All right. Well, thanks for waking up early with me, Justin. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, everyone, peace, love, and soul.